Hi everybody and welcome to my studio today. My name is Lana Lamb and I want to say thanks for dropping by. I hope you all have had a wonderful week wherever you are. My week's been a little busy and I'm still not getting into a regular routine so that makes it a little bit different but um, I tried to keep it as close to routine as possible without being able to go out and see my grandkids. That's really hard. Um, but I just decided to create a fun little video for you to kind of take your mind off of things and maybe think of doing something for someone else. Um, I did some paper crafting, which I haven't done in a long time and I'm not very proficient at. So you're probably going to get a lot of giggles out of this and those of you out there that are really good at paper crafting are going to go, oh my gosh. I mean, it's pretty basic stuff what I'm doing here. It's nothing fancy or anything. But I tried to keep it a little bit more simple so that uh, you could just use what you have on hand. So let me show you what we're going to be doing. Um, in the video, I show you how to do these three cards right here and how to get a really fun background. Yes, we play around with some glitter and bling it up, some paint and some stamping. Um, you know, you could just cut pictures out of a book and decoupage them. You know, there's all different ways that you can do things where you don't have to spend a whole lot of money, but can give something um, just as a, I, I'm thinking of you gift to someone else. Send them a card, let them know you're thinking of you. This is a card that I painted. I didn't paint this on the video, but I kind of tell you what I did um, here. It's just a stamp that I, painted and put some glamour dust on. Uh, it's pretty pretty basic. Um, not, not much to it, but I do give you some tips on how to make your own cards. Um, again, it was basic and, you know, pretty raw because I was trying to think, you know, people that don't normally make cards like me or people that don't have the supplies to do some of the things that uh, other card makers you know and paper crafters can do I was trying to keep it simple for all of you but I think it turned out to be a pretty entertaining <laughs> little video and uh, I do make quite the glitter mess but it's a lot of fun and I think that uh, you're going to hopefully enjoy it as well so if you're ready let's turn around to my crafting table and let's get started Hi everybody, I am coming to you in just a little bit of a different kind of video. We're going to be doing some paper crafts today, which I don't normally do videos on. I haven't paper crafted in quite a while. It's a lot of fun, but um, I'm trying to um, give people some options for coping with their feelings during this time and thinking about other people and... Um, not getting caught up in our thoughts of being sad and lonely and having depression set in. So we're going to try and turn those feelings into some creativity that we can then uh, give what we accomplish to someone else. We don't have to. We can keep it for ourselves and keep it and say, this is what uh, helped me get over that hurdle. But um, we're just going to make a couple of paper crafts today that um, hopefully will um, get you out of your funk and get you going. And, um, you know, you don't have to be overly creative with this stuff. You just got to get in and do it. And some of us are having, even, having a hard time even finding the motivation to just sit down and do something. We just don't know where to begin because our routine has just completely been altered. So let's just dive into just playing with some paint and some papers and lots of other stuff. And um, you don't have to have a lot of things. You can use whatever is around your home. Don't feel like you have to buy anything. But uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of projects that I'm going to do. Now I'm using this um, acrylic uh, mixed media paper. It's textured almost like a canvas. I've had this for a few years, I actually forgot that I had it, so I thought I would create something with this paper. 
You can use just regular scrapbooking paper. You can use a brown paper sack and, and paint it up. You don't have to. You can use poster board. Um, actually, another project I think I will do use poster board with it. Um, just use whatever you have on hand. You know, if you've got one of those shipping envelopes, express shipping envelopes, cut it apart and paint it. Um, it's a nice weight of cardboard to use for a paper projects. So I'm going to be using this as soon as I set it out of the way here. So I've got my surface covered with um, paper because I'll probably be doing some kind of spattering with this. Um, I want to divide this paper in half because the top half of the paper I'm going to paint one way and the bottom half another way. I'm going to make bookmarks out of this and I want the bookmarks, this is a 9 by 12 sheet of paper, so I want the bookmarks to be about 6 inches each. So I'm going to divide this paper in half and paint um, one design on one side and one design on the other. I say a design, but it's really just going to be slinging some paint on here. Seriously, that's all it's going to be doing. So I'm just going to grab some paints out of here. I'm not going to get too wild or anything, but you know, the if any of you have seen my, my bee that I painted on a pillow cover and I painted it on an 8x8 canvas. This wasn't shook up very good. And um, so that's what I want to paint up here. I want to create that kind of wood grain color that was on that pillow cover. And um, paint some, cut it up and paint some bees on there. I think that would be a fun little bookmark. So I just put out some soft black, some white, some zinc. You could use black and white to make a dark gray and then this is bright blue and I'll probably mix just a tiny bit of gray in with that because I want it to be more of a gray blue I'm gonna grab a large brush here actually I think I'll get a flat brush because I want my my boards to stay fairly flat so I'm just gonna grab an old brush that I have here flat brush instead of a filbert one. I'll probably use the filbert one on the bottom. And I want to thin some of this paint. I'm going to start with some white up here and just brush it across. I know you won't be able to see the white at first until we start adding some other colors in here. I'm going to go into some of my gray here. And I'm just going to continue across, creating like planks across this. I think I'll put a little bit of soft black up on the top edge up here. I still got a lot of gray there, so let me grab soft black. This is why I put my paper down for, for this reason, but for another reason. We're going to do some different spattering techniques. That's a lot of soft, soft black in that corner, but it'll be all right. Okay, I rinsed my brush out because I wanted to get that soft black out of there. I want to mix a little bit of blue and gray together. I want you to just be creative with your, with your paints. Don't feel like you have to do what I do. Just grab some colors that you like and go for it. Okay, I'm going to go back into some white. Lighten the next layer up. I'm going to streak through that white one up there, I think. I don't like it plain white like that. And then some gray. This is zinc. And I'm sure my lines won't be very straight, but um, I think I want to do some more white here at the bottom. And then this one up here, I'm going to streak some, maybe some soft black in there. And maybe just a little bit of that blue-gray. Tone that down a little bit. 
I want a lighter color up there. I just don't want it to be straight white. And I really need to take my my soft black down. It is just way too dark. A little bit lighter stripe through there, I think. So I'm going to go over that with some white. And then we reapply that soft black up there. Just going to get a little bit on the corner of my brush, which I think I picked up some gray too, but that's okay. Okay, so kind of a plank look. They're not straight, but on my material it wasn't straight either. And I think that's going to work out just fine. Okay, so down here on this section down here, I wanted to um, just wash in some some colors, and so I'm going to put some turquoise blue and some vivid violet out. We can make some bright colors. I also want some bright yellow and some orange flame. So I'm probably going to divide this in half and do some over here and some over here. So we'll probably make about two, four or five, um, depending on how wide you make your bookmarks. I mean, everybody's spending their time reading now, so we'll give them something that they can use to go along with their reading and something when they see it, they can think about you. I think that is a nice thing to do. So, that now away. So I want to, I want, really want these colors to be like sheer washes. So I grab some water and I'm just going to pull some of that paint out and make it super thin and streak it down through here. And then we're going to do something fun. I'm going to wash off. And then do the same thing for my blue. I want to thin it down. And we're going to streak it down through here. And go into that pink. Let's bring a little bit of that pink over here. And I don't really want it to be in that one, but. Those are some pretty colors there. Now let's try this over here on this one. This is orange flame and some yellow. Just a bright yellow. Put it down here so I can mix it with some water. We want transparent colors here. The, the yellow is pretty transparent anyway. He's in it. Okay, that's fun. Just let what's left of my brush come over here. How's that sound? Maybe, of course, that will turn that green yellow. Let's go with some blues. Just have fun with it. We're going to do some stuff here. Okay, so we've got a couple of colors going on down there. I want to make sure that this stays wet. So I'm going to spritz it with some water. That might be a little more water than we need. Now I've got some rubbing alcohol. And I don't want to spritz it on there. I think I'm going to drop it on there. And see if we can do this like, we, like I do it on... Uh, another, yeah, there we go. See, oh, look at that. That's super awesome. Just letting those over here, it may not show up as much because that's such lighter colors. I think I may have to put some darker colors in there so we can see that. But look at that. That's just drops of rubbing alcohol. Oh, 
I just think that is super cool. I'm not very wet here. The paper will flatten as it dries, so don't worry about it bubbling up. Ooh, that was a lot of alcohol there. So, but your paint really has to be wet in order to get that effect on there. So, I'll probably let this dry, put another coat of paint over here, and then do the alcohol again, maybe a little bit over here as well, so that I can get that effect all over the whole thing. I think that is super awesome. So, let me get this dry. Okay, I've got it dry. You see it flattened out as it dried. So, I'm going to go back in with some more washes here. Another layer. Wash my brush out and grab some blue. Ooh, that's a lot of blue. Don't want that much blue. And then put that in there. I'm going to add some of my orange, I think, in here. Bring some of those colors from over there over here. And I think I'll do the same over here. Add some pinks. And I'm just going to put it where I feel like I want to put some more alcohol. Okay, and I don't want that to dry, so I'm going to spritz it with some water. And then here we go with our alcohol again. Now you can take a paintbrush and spatter um, this with a, a spattering technique with the paintbrush. I just love this effect. I think it is just super awesome. more wetness through there. And maybe just a touch up here. Oops. Okay. I want some more spots through there. Darn good here. That is just the awesomest technique I think ever. And those colors are fun, fun, fun. Okay, I think that that is looking pretty good. I'm gonna set this aside to dry. And we're going to pull in another piece of paper that we're going to do something different with. We'll cut that up when it gets dry and embellish it a little bit. Um, I've got a large piece of poster board here. And um, I actually want to make a card that will fit inside of this envelope. Now, if you, uh, I want it to be this big because I want to put, the bookmark is like six inches and I want it to fit inside the card that I make. So um, if you have an envelope that you like the size of, just pull that envelope apart and take some of your um, computer paper. And um, if you have something a little bit heavier, like some scrapbooking paper that doesn't have a wild, bright design on it, you can use that as envelope paper. That's what I use. I use scrapbooking paper that's a pale color. It's got maybe a, a soft design in the background. But just pull your envelope apart and then you have your pattern. And you just need some type of glue at the top, like you can use Elmer's glue. You can use decoupage medium. You can use double back tape, whatever. 
to close it and to uh, seal your sides. But making an envelope is as easy as taking apart an old one that you like the shape of and making your own. Just trace around it and cut it out. Easy as that. So I want my card to fit inside here. So the card is going to be slightly smaller than the um, envelope. So I'm going to mark right about here. And line my ruler here. And line my ruler up with my edge. And I'm going to draw a line. This is just scrapbooking paper. I mean, not scrapbooking paper. This is just poster board. Just plain old poster board. Okay, then we're just going to take our scissors and cut that in half. Or cut that piece off right there. And then we're going to determine how big we want it. So that's the piece we don't need. So then this direction we need it to fold right about here. Let me measure that so I get it exact here. That is almost five and a half inches. So that would be ten. Almost eleven. So let's go five and a half. Five and a half and five and a half is eleven. Let's make sure that's not too big. Should fit perfect. We don't need this line. And we want to cut off this amount right here. Let me find my mark. Get my ruler straight. I like using this ruler because it's got all this grid and I can see right exactly where I need to draw my line. I can get it nice and square on there. Then we're just going to use our scissors. Now if you've got some kind of cutting tool, you can use that. But I'm trying to show you a way that if you don't have all this fancy stuff, you do not have to worry about it. So now we want to mark across here. We want a score line. So let me line that up right there. We want a score line. So a score line is easy as taking some pointed scissors and running it across that edge without cutting through. We just need a line where we can fold it. See, it's a fold line now. So we can fold our card either direction right on that fold line. Mine quite square here. I must have moved my ruler. Let me square it up. I probably didn't cut it straight, but I don't worry about it. I'm going to line up this side right here, and then I'm going to cut this edge to match it. I use my scissors. Here there. We just we need both sides to be the same, so I'm just going to cut off and try and make it square. Probably won't be perfectly square. I'm sure it's not. It looks like it's got a bow in it now. A little bit of a bow. So let me cut that. But if you have a cutting uh, machine of some kind, then cutting this will be much easier. Now, this is a handmade card, so we don't have to worry about it being perfect, do we? No, we don't. Okay, so I want to put something on the front of this. But I want it, I don't want to just glue it down, I want it to be a little bit decorative. So what I'm going to do is put my 
my bottle in the corner here. So I'm lining the edge of the bottle up with the edge of both edges of the paper. Okay. Then I'm going to mark right here. I'm going to do the same over here. You can use something smaller if you're doing a smaller card. You can use a smaller circle of some kind, like the, this lid would make a nice one. Okay, and then here's where you're going to take a razor blade. Let me get my cutting mat. So you want to cut on top of some cardboard or some type of cutting mat so you don't cut your top of your table. And I'm just going to take a sharp blade and very slowly go around that circle. You can make it fancy if you want. And I'll go around the side. You can make scallops in it if you think you want to cut scallops. If you have a corner punch, then you can use a corner punch. But I'm trying to show you what to do if you don't have all those tools. So that is lifted it will lift up. I'm going to erase those lines on there. And um, then you can put your front of your card underneath those. You'll want to paint it or do something really nice to it. I'll show you a small one that I've done. So this is one I did use an actual corner punch for this. This is just scrapbooking paper. And I stamped a, a stamp on it of a flower. I actually stamped this word one in the, on the edge of the paper going a few different directions. And then I stamped the flower and then this is a separate piece of paper that I stamped the words just for you. And you don't have to have any of these stamps. You can just write it by hand. You can find a picture of a flower that you like and trace it and trace it onto here and then just outline it with a black identipen. Okay? And then just outline it and then paint some uh, washes of color in there. And then I stuck my glue on the edges. Well, I didn't stick it down here, but just on these three edges. Maybe not. Just on the top edge. I'll get it right here. And then I just tucked in the other ends right here so that this would stay stuck. I did put some glamour dust on it. You can't see it real well in the light. The light never really shows it. Oh, there we go. We've got some sparkle going on. So it has a little bit of bling to it. So who doesn't love some bling on their cards? The good thing about this bling is not going to come off on you all over the place when you um, open it up. Okay, so that's what you can do. By That's how you can make your own card. Okay, and this one I can put my bookmark in. Now, if you want to go with a smaller size, you can definitely go with a bookmark. That's the, the length of your card or just slightly shorter than your card. So um, make a card that you like. If you have a card already, um, then use that card. Let's say you don't have any cards, but you have some cards that somebody sent you. So with that, here's what you can do. You can cut off the top part of the card because the, in, the writing is going to be inside here. Cut off this part right here and that can be your card. You can flip it over and write a message on the back of it. Tuck your bookmark in with it, but you've got a really cute front of a card for someone. That's how you can repurpose a card that someone sends you because a lot of times we don't keep the cards. And, um, but they have beautiful photos on them. They're just beautiful cards and you hate to throw them away. Well, pass that beautiful card onto someone else. You can even take it and, and glue it onto a, a card blank that, that you have, if you have a card blank. And just glue that card right on top of the card blank that you have. So there's lots of ways that you can um, make a card without a lot of expense. And, um, I just think it is just a super fun way. That's not quite dry. I'm going to dry this real quick. Okay, I've got it dry. I want to cut, cut these two parts a half. Uh, I'll get it out. Cut these two halves apart. So I'm going to lay my ruler on my line here and take 
with a knife or something, you can just redraw your line and cut it in half with some scissors. And I'm going to cut it in half. And so now we have two halves. Okay, so on this half here, I'm going to decide how wide I want my bookmarks to be. I like this paper because it's a little bit thicker, it's a little more durable. So poster board would be a good size. So the width of this ruler is one inch. I don't think that's quite big enough for a um, bookmark. This one is one and a quarter inches wide and that's fairly decent for a bookmark. But I think I'm going to make mine two inches. This is a two inch wide ruler. So I just want to line it up here. And oh, let me get my mat back out. You can draw your lines and then cut them. I'm going to cut a little bit off the bottom of this first because I got some of those other colors on there and I don't want that on my bookmark. Oops. That does not look straight right there. So I'm going to measure off two inches for my bookmarks. So I'm going to line up my grid. I'm going to take one of my fat lines and put it down there on the very edge. Make sure I am even over here. And then I'm just going to cut down that line. There is the beginnings of my first bookmark. And I'm going to do the same thing again until I can't make any more bookmarks. And if you want it to be even thicker, you can you could uh, attach it to another piece of paper or glue two of these together, make it a front and back bookmark. square out that might be a lot easier okay here we go okay. I think I can get two more out of this one so that's going to be a nice amount I can find four friends to send my bookmarks to And I'm going to cut the other um, paper as well. I'll just go off camera and do that. You don't need to be watching me just cutting paper here. And so I have a little piece that I won't use. And we have four bookmarks that we can make some cute little bees on and some other stuff. We're going to do some other stuff to them, not just leave them like that. So I'm going to get my other paper cut. Okay, let's start having some fun with these. The first thing I want to do before I go any further is figure out which is the top, which is the bottom, your decision, and punch or poke a hole in it. I could not find my round punch for the life of me, so I am punching with a square punch. So we can put a cute little decorative string on here. 
but again this is this part is optional adding the punch or the hole at the top you don't have to do that because you could just staple on a piece of ribbon or some um, yarn at the top you don't have to punch a hole in it so don't feel like you know you can't make a card if you don't punch a hole in it so let me punch some holes in these I'm going to use this as the top up here and then we're going to start adding some fun stuff to these. And you could even round the edges if you wanted the edges of your bookmarks rounded. So I'm going to start with one of these um, wood grain ones. And I want to add some fun stuff in the background. So I want to do a little bit of stenciling stuff. Um, again, this is optional. You can do as little or as much to yours as you want. Don't feel like you have to do any of this. So I'm going to take some of my gray paint with my makeup sponge and tap some of this on here just very lightly. I don't want a lot going on here. I do want to be able to tell it's a shape and I just moved my card so it probably won't tell it's a shape. Uh, I also have some, get it, some bubble wrap. Everybody's got bubble wrap. So I'll do a little bit of blue and gray with this one and tap it onto our bubble wrap. If you have a circle um, punch that you can use, you can do that. And we're just going to add some fun little texture stuff in the background here. And that didn't come off very good. My bubbles, my bubbles didn't have as much air in them as I thought they had in them. You want to make sure your bubbles have air. So you can get that bubbly effect, which I didn't get that bubbly effect at all. So I'm going to remove that. Paintbrush still had some of the purple color in it. All right, that didn't that did not bubble. That bubble wrap did not do me any justice. So I'm just going to go to a circle. Grab some blue and gray. Tap on my paper towel and just very lightly tap on here. If you've got a smaller circle stencil, you can certainly use that. I want these circles to kind of come across. There we go. Again, it's however you like it. I'm going to take this stamp because I love this stamp and I'm going to put some soft black on it up here in one of the corners and stamp onto this. I think it's going to make it look so cute. A little bit of black paint. And then another little stamp. You really want to do fresh paint every single time that you stamp because that's going to give you the, the better stamping effect. Okay, so I'm just going to try and remove as much of that paint off of there as I can since I can't get right to my sink and clean it. So just some water. Just tap it off of there. You want to take it to your sink and clean it with just a little bit of soap so your paint doesn't get dried into the the letter cracks and fill them in and then it just it just stamps a blob it won't stamp not that this really says anything but you know you still want it to to be a nice stamp so clean it if you're using a stamp okay let me set that aside and um, now I want to draw a bee on here. So a, a bee is 
pretty easy to draw. Um, I'm just going to draw a circle. And then I'm going to draw almost an oval, but bring it to a point. Okay, I think I'll draw this with my identipen so you can see it. We've got a circle for the bee's head, and he's got two little eyes. Or big eyes, so kind of big. And then he's got his body, and he'll have a wing here. Going here, and if your wings go off of the bookmark, that's okay. Just makes it a lot more cuter that way, and you can give him legs and add as much detail to him as you want. So we want to create his different colors in his body. So I'm going to grab some of my yellow and a smaller brush here. And the yellow won't show up very well because it's kind of transparent, so I'm going to add some white to it. And then we'll just figure out. So his head, I think we'll put one stripe through here, and that's black. We'll put a stripe of yellow through here, and then through here. And then the rest of it's going to be black. On his wings as well, we want to find my pen again some little veins in his wing. It's almost like stained glass, so just be, don't make everything perfect. Just be creative and have fun. Just make it easy. We want this to be where we're not really thinking too much. And we'll go ahead and give it some antenna up here. Come back with just our bright yellow and see if we can brighten that up a little bit. And I'm going to use the soft black for our dark color. So everything else will be painted in with this darker color. And we're not trying to be exact and precise. We're just being fun and playful here. Okay, just a cute little bee. Because we're going to add some other stuff to it. Now on my my pillow and my canvas that I painted. I, I had one of them let it be and the other one be happy. But on this one you can do whatever you want. You can write a message that says um, find peace or you know find a moment to be still or you know um, what whatever it is that you would like to convey is what you can put on there. I'm going to take a little bit of white paint and I'm going to thin it down here. I've got this really old scruffy brush here. Hopefully I'll stay inside my wings. And I just want to put a little bit inside the wings. Lighten them up just a little bit. Gives them a little bit of a transparent look. We don't want to use, don't use straight solid paint here. You can always come back and, and re-outline the wings here. So I'm going to use the stamp that says just for you. Like I said, you don't have to use a stamp. You don't have to um, put anything on it except for the B if you want. Or you can even leave the B off. I think I am going to put a little bit more yellow back on my yellow sections and brighten them just a little bit. We're going to add something else on here. So I'm going to use my blue and 
gray to make a, a blue gray color. And paint's starting to dry, so I gotta get a little wet. And I'm gonna stamp on here. More paint. More paint than you think you'll need on here. But not so much that it fills in the letter, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you know I have you on camera. I'm just tapping the paint on here with a makeup sponge. Just want to get some nice coverage on there. Even if it's not completely covered, that's okay. So I'm just going to stamp this on there just for you. I think I may outline that with my pen so it pops a little bit. Let me get this paint off of my stamp real quick. At least the majority of it. And then I think um, just a little bit of wrong thing. Outlining on the letters. Just a little bit of white on there so it shows up a little bit. Do as much or as little as you want, like I said, because um, this is just to help get your mind in a peaceful place. And um, a lot of times, if we just do something for someone else, or even if we don't send this to someone else, we've, we've stopped for a moment and let everything else fade away so that we can just be calm for a moment. Okay, we're going to add some fun stuff on here. I'm going to add some bling, bling, bling. Well, let's see. On this one, I think I want to add the, the gold. Champagne gold. Champagne stardust. Now this is the glamour dust. You can use regular glitter. I did bring my regular glitter out here, which I just might do this so I can show you how to do this with some decoupage. Where's my decoupage? Okay, let's just use this real quick. Alright, I'm gonna grab some decoupage glue. Any kind of glue will actually do here. And I'm gonna put this on the bee where his yellow stuff is and I want to save this glitter so I don't I don't want to do it on something that I can't save it from so I have a I have a glitter tray but before I bought this glitter tray I just used a paper plate because then I could fold the paper plate up and stick it back down into this right here. So I've let my glue tack up just a little bit. Letting it tack up is uh, important. I'm going to dump that on there. Tap it off. Oh, looky, looky, looky. You can do as many layers of that as you would like. I'm also going to put some black on the black parts and um, I watch around for glitter sales all the time and this particular package I got on clearance one year at Michaels I've had this forever and I'm trying to grab some black glitter out of it 
I'm not going to worry about getting that out. Tap it down, open the tunnel, and let it go into the jar. Okay, where's my B card? Here it is. Okay, let's put some glue on the black parts. I think I'm going to take some some glue and make some dotted lines like a trail of the bee buzzing and flying around. Okay, now we're going to use our black glitter here. dried out. I may have dried out too much right there. Yep. Didn't get as dark as I wanted down here. But look at that bee sparkle. Oh, it's so good. Okay, now you'll want to make sure you put your, your glitter up um, as you use it but I'm going to put some clear on the wings and instead of using this type of glitter I'm going to use some glamour dust glitter paint this is a clear um, I don't want to say glue but it's a clear base with the fine glitter in it and I'm going to paint the wings I really feel like I've lost my lettering up there. I feel like it's not standing out like I want it to, so I think I'm going to go over it with my black identipen and just make it black. Okay. So that makes the wings look more transparent. How fun is that? So where is my black pen? I want to make sure this is dry. I'm not sure that's going to even show up, but I just feel like it's fading away on there. I'm not really sure what to do about that. Maybe I will put some glamour dust on it. Let's see if we can't get it to pop this way. And then you can leave it as simple as this. Or you can add even more to it. And have fun. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of the black. Maybe I'll put some of the yellow. Still doesn't show up the best, but you know, you can just keep playing around with it till you get it how you like it. Okay, um, I think that the trail here need the the strokes need to be 
wider but uh, I'm gonna leave it at that so then you can take some ribbon or some yarn and make your little string so I'm just gonna take some yarn here you can do more to this if you want like I I feel like the edges would would uh, be pretty if we kind of colored the edges a little bit at least the corners I think it makes it look a little bit more finished is not dry so I'm going to be careful and not go through it. So I think that gave it a little bit more of a fun stuff there. I really want more I'm going to do my black again. I'm trying to see where my strokes are. I can find a different jar and put that in and just have a nice little mix of glitter. Okay, that looks much better. I like that. I like that much better. And let me put a little bit of mist to some here. I have my ceiling fan on, so it's probably drying this faster than I can get it on here. Okay, so there is a really fun way that you could just spend some time being creative and making something for someone. Let it dry really well, and then you could varnish right on top of this paper and get it nice and sealed so they don't have to worry about glitter coming off in their book. Or you could even laminate it if you had some laminate. I think that would be really pretty to laminate it. And I'm just going to tie these off on the end here. And we've got this fun little quick easy bookmark. Isn't that cute? So cute. I love it. Again, you want to protect the glitter from coming off in their book. So be sure and varnish or laminate your um, beautiful artwork. And then it will keep forever. And then the back side, I didn't do it, but the back side you'll want to probably paint it like a solid color and um, that way it's a finished bookmark. Or you can put another piece, you could adhere another piece of scrapbooking paper or something on the back, stamp it, do whatever you want to the back. But we want, we want it to be finished on both sides, so sh be sure and finish the back side of it. Okay, so that's one bookmark done. Let's go here and pick out one of these that we can play around with. And oh, I really like this pink one. Let's do th these two are my favorite ones. So let's see what I want to use on here. I've got some really fun, I've never used this before, tape. It's adhesive tape, but you can take scrapbooking paper and cut it down into strips. Stick your decoupage glue on the back of it and create some really fun uh, ribbon of your own. Um, if you've got regular ribbon, you could also do the same thing. 
Uh, we just need some glue on the back of it. So let's see what we got here. This is really pretty. That would be pretty with this one. And then I have a couple of silver ones. I'm not even sure how long I've had these or where I even got them. I'm sure I probably got them at Michael's, but I don't know how long I've had them. I probably bought them when they were on sale. Um, Tapeworks is the brand. So Here are the three that I have. The only three that I have. <laughs> It's something I bought I thought I would try sometime, but I have yet to try it. So I'm going to use this one. I think I'm going to do the pink bookmark here. Something a little bit different. And let's see what we can do with this. Did I find the end of it? Is that the end or is this the end? I don't even know how this stuff works, so we'll be learning it together. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm sure somebody's yelling through the video. That's not the way to start it. Okay, I'm sorry. I never used this stuff before. I don't even know how. I'm going to do use this on this one then. I think on this one I'm going to show you how to make your own tape on it. Okay. So where should we put this? Should we put it across the top and the bottom? down the side, down the center. No, I don't want it down the center. I don't want to split the paper in half. I think I'm going to do it down the long side. So I'm going to take this and let me cut it. And let's see if I can do this. Never done this before. Learning right here. Everybody else that's done paper crafts is probably thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe she can't figure that out. Come on, it's just tape. Ooh, so pretty. I'm just going to fold mine over. I would, uh, no, I think I'm going to cut it because I want to do something to the back. So I don't want to have any buildup on the back of it. So let me cut that off. That's so pretty. So pretty. How about we use some stamping on here? Okay, let's see what I got. I got... So many stamps. <sighs> words. No, oh, we've already done words. This is a really cute stamp, Sandy McTeer. We could put her half on, half off. Uh, Live, laugh, love. That would be cute down, down that. This is just some swirls. That'd be cute in the background. Um, this is a Tim Holtz stamp. It says artist, story, create. Found, inspire, love. Some leaves. Mm, nice. Here's a cute one. Let me move some of these out of the way. A lot of these I haven't never used. I bought them but never used them. This would be cute. Put that little stamp of a jar right there and put those two flowers coming out of it. Those uh, those would be awful big, but I think they would be cute. Here's some cute little stamps. Some of these stamps I've had forever and a day. Don't know where I got the majority of them. Of course, the stamp pendant ones, you can definitely get those online. Um, this is a Fisker's one. I don't. Oh, I bought it. I started to say I don't know where I got it, but I got it at Hobby Lobby right there. It says Hobby Lobby, but again, I don't know how long I've had it. So. Um, this is really nice. Today I will create something beautiful. I like that. That's really pretty. Live creatively. Color outside the lines. I like that. This one is a... Um, uh, oh, the flower just went clear out of my head. It is a hydrangea. <laughs> oh, I got two of those swirl ones. How do you like that? And then this is some old postage stamp one. So... Let's try. Again, I'm not a, a paper crafter, so you can just have fun watching me try and do something I don't normally do. Because I'm a painter, and I don't really... do this kind of stuff, so I don't even know how to get it out of the package. Goodness gracious. Okay, so 
there's my stamp. I'm thinking it sticks to one of these, but I don't even know if that's how it works. So I hope you all are having a good time at my expense. I'm, I'm hoping I'm entertaining because, <laughs> because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, and get this out. Come on, baby. There we go. Okay, does this stick on here? Oh, it does. Okay. <laughs> See, I learned something new. How about if we stamp that on there? Put the jar. And then we'll see what we can create after that. Now with this one, I probably want to... Oh, that's the protective sheeting. Don't want to lose that. And I think I just got glitter all over it because my whole table is covered with glitter. Maybe I'll put an extra piece of paper here and keep glitter from getting on top of everything. Okay. So um, let's stamp this on here. Let's, let's do something different. I, d I just want to do something different. You know, I'm, I'm thinking outside the box. It, it may be something that I absolutely don't like when I'm done. But if I do, I'll just send it to somebody and tell them I loved it. <laughs> okay. All right, I had to go get my ink. <laughs> I forgot to bring that over here. Okay, so I'm going to use some stays on. This is timber brown. You can use black, whatever you like to use. And I'm going to hopefully... I haven't used my stamp pads in forever, so I don't even know if there's ink in them. This looks like it has ink in it. Hopefully we'll get some good coverage there. Again, I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Is this right? I hope it's right. Oh, looky there. We got a jar. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Now I don't know. I think I have some stays on cleaner. <laughs> so I'll clean that after. Let's see our flowers here. We can put... Ooh, that's a big flower. That's a big old flower. We can put some stems in there. Those will be nice, but I, I really want a part of one of these. That is a ginormous flower. But maybe if we put just half of it in there, or a lot of it in there. Maybe on this side. I don't even know if I can paint on that stuff. So, again, we're going to learn this together, people. Don't know what I'm doing, but I'm creating. I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun watching me, because I ah, sure I'm doing it all wrong. All right, so this flower is going to be going off of the side here. I didn't stamp on that tape at all. I don't know if I can draw some lines on there, kind of get where we're going. Let me see what this looks like. Oh, that's a petal right there. And there's a petal here. This is our center, which we can't see. It goes off over here. And then we have this leaf here. I'm not going to be able to paint on that at all. I don't think paint's going to stick to it. So I might have to think outside the box for that. Let's do our stems here. And see how we can make them work. This just might be a complete and utter flop here. I want them way up there. I don't think I need the, um, the paper. The, um, I don't know if this is how I'm supposed to do it, but this is how I'm going to do it. I don't want it to paint on the jar, or stamp on the jar. I just want it to... <sighs> Probably rocking it is not what you're supposed to do, so that I didn't add extra stems in there. I didn't want extra stems in the jar. So let me 
think we're basically going to have a jar full of buds. like it's going nowhere, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know, you're all rolling your eyes going, oh my gosh, somebody teach her how to stamp something. What is she doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I absolutely do not know what I'm doing. Okay. I have a few flowers that I can actually see. So, how about if we paint some of those in? What do you think? All right, I think I'm gonna, since I have some blue, let's use, no, let's use blue. I think I'll paint my jar in with a little bit of blue. Otherwise I left my brush in my water. Don't wanna do that ruin it. I have a bigger mess than normal here, so I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> I'm painting outside my box, so I'm making a mess. I don't know how I ended up with two flat brushes here. I don't know a whole lot going on here. So let's see what we got. Well, I can put a little bit of that paint on that. Just make this a little light blue jar. Let's. Oh, I need some green out here. So let's see. I got yellow and blue. So let me make some green. person that if she sees this video is going to be laughing her head off going what in the world is this woman doing I won't name any names oh see I have two stems right here and they go to absolutely nothing 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 so <laughs> I'm gonna put a bud in there how about that one lonely little bud. Maybe. Maybe not. I could probably draw a bud in here. It'd probably be easier. Alright, where's my paper? I'm going to block off. I already got stems. I don't need another stem. Trying to work it out here. Well, it sort of showed up. Sort of. Not sure that helped, but it's in there now. have a stem right there for that one. Where's my pen? I'll make one real quick. All right, there. Stem. Done. A little pecking in it. There you go. Done. It's done. It's done. All right, flowers. Let's do some flowers and I know I already have this color in the background but I think if we darken it up just a little bit of this color on the brush on the corner darken. of course this is poppies I don't even know if poppies come in this color but you know what it's my world I'm gonna make them whatever color I want them to be let's go with some turquoise 
my world. Let's make, ooh, that's a lot. Take some of that off so we can make a little bit sheer of a color here. We'll make a turquoise poppy. Come back and redo that one. Let's make a yellow poppy. Those are pretty. I'm going to let those dry and do them again here in a minute. But my white's not completely dried out. I'll get a little bit of white and add some highlights on this jar. I don't, I don't want to be technical here, <laughs> obviously, but I want, um, you know, some, a little bit of, looks like glass going on there. So we're just going to put a little bit of that on there. Oh, I missed a, a poppy down here, the extra one that I added in. Um, Let's make him, see we got yellow, blue, and pink. I guess we'll go with orange. That's the other color I have out here. I'm going to get that thinner, so I'm going to add uh, some water and make it just a sheer little wash. And then we'll put the orange one in right here. Little poppy buds. Now, this one that's back here, <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with it. It needs to be red, I think. Do I have any red out here? I do have some Santa red. I don't have red anywhere on this project, so this might just not be the color I need. No, I'm not going to go with it. Um, let's just take my purple and add some blue to it, and we'll make a different color of purple here. I've got my violet and my purple, and I'm mixing them together. I, vivid Violet, and um, this is turquoise blue. So I'm making a different color of purple here. And I'm going to paint this on this flower back here. Don't really know where it starts and stops. But that will just kind of wash it in there can't really paint over that ribbon, but that kind of takes care of that and keeps it from being so drastic out there. So let's put another really sheer thin coat on our pink one. And I'm just doing it at the base, kind of walking it up a little bit, but I'm leaving the top just plain. And then our blue, if I can get some without getting some of that red in there. Again, we don't want very much paint. We want water to thin it down. pretty good I think and then our orange and look at that we can be done now got all of our poppies in there and it would have been just fine without the big one back there in the background because we can't see it anyway so again you want to finish out the back of it with something if you want to add some glitter on here you can certainly do that um, glitter paint, glitter powders, anything that you want on there. But I think that looks pretty good. We got that shine going on there. Let me grab another piece of yarn and I'll put a topper on this one. Or a string on it, I guess I should say. And you can use ribbon. I just happen to have two spools of, or skeins, or whatever you call them, of yarn laying around not doing anything so why not use those and then I'm going to tie off the top and cut some of this one off it's way too long and there we go so we have two bookmarks aren't they cute as can be two cute bookmarks now I'm going to do this one super quick and show you how to 
make your own glittery ribbon. Okay, so I'm going to take some double-sided tape and I'm going to put a piece across the top and hopefully it will be straight. I want to cut it off at the edges. I don't want it hanging over. And I've never done this before, so I don't even know how well it will work. So we're going to figure this one out together like we've done everything else. It's a little short, but we're going to go with it. Okay, so now I want to um, get my glitter back out and I bought this little package at Hobby Lobby so let's see if I can figure out how to open it I want to use that bright pink in there this bright pink right here you can use whatever color you want but this bright pink is going to be beautiful let's see if it will stick to our double-sided tape. Whoa, look at that. I'll make sure your whole tape is covered so it doesn't stick, stick to something else. This would be one you definitely want to laminate or probably even varnish it would be okay. So pretty. You can see I was short. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, let's do something else with some glitter. I know you're probably tired of glitter. Like, no more glitter, please. But I think this would be so pretty if we did hearts, like coming up, and then did the hearts in different color of glitter. What do you think? What do you think? Okay, I need my decoupage medium. I'm going to use a little paintbrush this time, I think. So I want to figure out how many I want to be with my first color. So I'm going to put some glitter or some glue. I'm going to go up this way, so let's do this one. I'm going to go up this way, so let's do this one. And those will be our first three that we glitter. So let's start with some orange glitter. drying already. Let's see if this will work out. I don't even know if it'll work out. You'll be able to tell that's a heart. Oh, you can sort of tell it's a heart. But I think we need brighter colors. That orange just blends in with the background too much. So let's get some of these colors out. Let's make it pretty. Okay, back to this. I'm gonna I'm gonna repaint in these. I want a different color of glitter on here. Something that's going to stand out. So let's put some of this green on. And I don't normally glitter like this, so just so you know, I usually dump the color back into the bottle and then go to the next color. I don't mix them all up like this. Oh, that one's not turning out so good. Okay, here's what to do if you don't like it. I'm going to take it off the damp brush. didn't like how that was going at all. Didn't look good. Didn't like it. So I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. I think what I'm going to do is find my other paper towel, which I've already used it. I have just the biggest mess here. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. All right. 
Okay, that's cleaned off. I really like the idea of using the tape here. The glitter seems to be sticking to the tape really well. But I would definitely decoupage over it to really seal it. Um, let's put a... Um, I didn't get a bunch of stencils out, so let's just stamp a flower on here. What do you think? Alright, let's just put a flower on here. Hopefully it will be centered. Eh, sort of. Sort of. It should get the job done. I hope. Let me cover up some of my, my bottles that I'm dumping all over the place. I just have glitter everywhere. Ridiculous. And this flower would look much better if it had stamped over here. Well, I'm just going to take my identipen and fill it in. Make it a little bit more opaque. And a little more fun. Okay, let's put some color on those petals. I'm really liking this violet that I have here. It's a vivid violet. I think it's beautiful. You could go with the white petals. And I'm still going to keep it a sheer color. So let's just put it on our petals. Back here at the back. We don't have to fill in the whole petal. So pretty. I'm loading just a little bit more just on that one side of my brush. some green on our leaves so we need our yellow and some blue more yellow more yellow a little bit of blue hope this video isn't five hours long I feel right now it's going to be five hours long but look how much fun we're having I want more pink. That's too opaque. I wiped some of that off of my brush. It was way too thick. Again, you can glitter up your flower if you want, but I figure you're probably tired of seeing me with the glitter. So I'm going to put some yellow on there. I think I need to get some more yellow. I made a brighter green, so I'll put that on the leaf. Down our stem. Okay, and there 
is another pretty little bookmark that you can give to someone. Let's put a string on it and we're going to call this one done. So if you don't mind having a big mess on your paint table, man, you can just have so much fun. Some of us get a little uptight about having our paint space really neat and I used to be that way but <laughs> as you can see not so much anymore crazy but so much fun oh I got my double stick tape stuff on there still there we go what a great way to use that double sided tape I love that that turned out super cute. I like it. You could stamp in the background, but I love how we did the background on these particular um, bookmarks. I just think it turned out super fabulous. Where's my other bookmarks? Okay, so we've done these three bookmarks. And aren't they just beautiful? I love them all. So it was fun for me because, you know, I don't a whole lot of stamping so then when you make your card to match it which I would I would make my card to match I would I would uh, use some of the paper and make the card front your colors that you used here and uh, then put a, a nice little note inside of it stick your bookmark in and mail it to somebody that you're thinking about that you really miss seeing that you um, just hope they're doing well um, be sure and varnish or laminate your pieces um, I think I'm gonna show you real quick on this one see how it does if we decoupage onto that double-sided tape I think it's gonna be fine you want to decoupage your whole card, preferably before you put your your ribbon in. I have glitter everywhere, so glitter is everywhere, literally. I think that's going to be just fine. It's still going to be sparkly, but it's going to be protected. Now make sure that your double-sided tape is cut off as flush as possible. Um, even just slightly short like I did this one, it's probably better because then you won't have to worry about anything sticking to it or laminate it. So um, that's probably something you can still put on your grocery shopping list if you would like, but um, just protect it in some way. And I would say just put a couple of coats of glue because that is also a sealer. So put a couple of coats of that on there. Boy, I got glitter all inside this. I better get that out of there. I don't want it in my glue. Next time I glue something, it'll be glitter. So you want to do that for all of your projects. And um, there you have three fun little cards to send someone. Apparently all I have is flower stamps. So... Um, Maybe I need to invest in a little more variety of stamps. I don't know. Flowers and words. Seems like that's what I got. So that's what you got from me today. Oh, I see something I want to do here. I do want to get some paint of any color. Prefer to have the burnt or the soft black. You see, I don't want to squeeze any more out. So <laughs> I'm going to make that dried up little puddle work for me want to put a little shadow or not underneath underneath my uh, bottle <laughs> not that it necessarily needed it I just you know, one of those things one of those things okay everybody I hope that you enjoyed watching me make an utter mess of everything but it was so much fun and so relaxing and I don't mind the mess at all so um, 
I love and appreciate every single one of you. I hope this video gave you a little time to just relax and laugh and think about something that you want to do for somebody else. So thanks so much for spending this time with me, everybody, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.